Great afternoon, kings and queens of Father's Glorious Nation. Today, we're going to have a bit of a divine intervention, meaning we must hold ourselves accountable for our end of the prayer. We can't expect God to fulfill his promise if we have not fulfilled ours. We all have gone through those stages, those phases of saying, oh my God, if I just let God, I promise to let go of this, I promise to let go of that, or I promise not to do this, or I promise to do that, certain things. <clears throat> And it's like, you begin to start to fulfill those promises, but the more that you try to fulfill those promises, you begin to feel the change required to really truly fulfill those particular promises. And in the process of you struggling through trying to make these changes in order to really grow, you become stagnant in the sense of saying, you get lost in the struggle. You get lost in the sense of, I'm trying, I'm trying, I'm trying. I'm really trying to get to that. I'm really trying to fulfill these promises. I'm really trying to stop doing this. Or I'm really trying to stop doing that. I'm really trying to stop smoking. I'm really trying to stop drinking. I'm really trying to stop overspending. I'm really trying to stop overeating. I'm really trying to stop doing all this, Father. And I know that if I stop doing all of this, I know that we've made the agreement that I promised you that I would stop doing this. So I know by me stopping doing this, I, you've promised me that you would give me something else or give me this particular thing. But in the process of releasing these things, we think that we live in such a microwave lifestyle that we think that it happens instantly. We think that, okay, cool. I told God I'm going to stop smoking. I'm going to stop drinking. I did. I didn't stop drinking for a day. I didn't stop drinking for a week. I didn't stop drinking for a month. But it gets to the point where you, f it gets to the point where you, 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 amongst your struggle, amongst your change, amongst you wanting to, to stop doing this and stop doing that, it seems that so much time ch passes to the point that you feel that you you feel that God isn't fulfilling his end of the promise. You feel that you get to the point where you feel that you're doing everything. You, 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 you stop doing this. So you stop doing that. Or you started doing this or you started doing that primarily to get this promise from God or primarily to grow in this in, in the promise that God has put upon your heart and yet you don't see it yet. And so you begin to get a little disheartened. You start to get discouraged. You start to feel discerned. I mean, you start to feel discouraged. And it's like your discernment, your faith kind of starts to get shaky. And then you start to kind of doubt yourself. Like, did I really listen to God properly? Did I really, like, am I really doing this right? Am I really doing that right? And the next thing you know, you kind of start to backtrack. You start to start to you, you start to backtrack. And the reason you start to backtrack is because now you're trying to go back and figure out exactly what you did wrong or what you can do different. Or you did, then you begin to overthink. As you backtrack, you overthink. And in the process of backtracking and overthinking, that's when you get lost in the struggle. You get lost in the struggle of trying to change and getting lost in the struggle of trying to change in that particular moment where you feel like you might start back smoking or you might start back drinking. That is the true test. That is the true test. All the time that you spent putting in trying to make sure that you keep focused and keep doing good so that you can get this change. All of that is a test. All of that is pretty, no, 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 no. All of that is the, is the study got up until the test. And that test is that one particular moment where you don't pick up those cigarettes or you don't pick up that drink or you don't do this or you don't overspend there or don't overindulge there. That is the particular test. And when you don't allow yourself to fall back completely, backtrack so much to the point that you end up back at square one, when you pass that test, only then is when you will begin to see things change in your life. Only then is when you begin to see God give you the favor that you deserve. We got to understand that God is not a microwave God. God can literally give you anything that you want at any given time. But you got to think about it. Why? If you, but you got to think about it. Certain things. But look, about, look at it this way. When something is given to you versus when it is earned, you looked at it differently. If you were just given a car just off the just off the wham, you were just given a car. Like you didn't struggle for it. You wasn't really had a struggle mindset. You just, okay, cool, I got a car. You, you're not going to treat the car the same way that you would have if you had to struggle to get the down payment for that car. If you had to hustle to make the money up for that car and then you finally get that car. When it's just given to you, you handle it like it was just given to you. But when you earn it, you handle things like when you like the way you've earned it. And that's the way God works. He wants you to earn certain things because certain things you have to work through, certain things you have to grow through, you have to change in order to achieve it, in order to receive it. So you get into the habit of 
allowing yourself to be accountable for the fact that you uh, so get to the get into the habit of allowing yourself to be accountable for the fact that you do got to put in the work you do have to do more than just a little bit you have to stop saying i'm trying you have to start doing like you're saying i'm trying or you're saying i'm trying to do this or i'm trying to do that but how hard are you really trying this is one thing that i've always had to ask myself or this is one thing that i've had to recently ask myself and there's a lot of things that i've had to got down, that's a lot of things that i've had to kind of come to terms with come to like the, the the clarity on and kind of accept in order for me to continue to grow like i'll be honest i feel that i'll just 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 to kind of speak a bit of an example just just to give kind of an example i have not had any kind of true diagnosis but i do feel that i suffer from bipolar depression by me accepting that this may be a fact because i'll be 100 percent honest it's still not something that i fully accept Primarily because I haven't had a diagnosis, but being that there is a possibility and being that mental illness is within my family, it's something that I have to take in consideration. And by me taking that into consideration, it's allowed me to open my mind up to view life on both aspects, meaning to say that it's allowed me to understand or it's, it's allowed me to realize that. Not everybody understands everything everything the same. Everybody understands everything differently. Everybody looks at everything differently. And by me allowing myself to put, to accept the fact that I have, you know, I do have emotional issues, but I allow myself to accept that I do need to find balance within my emotions. And honestly, by me finding balance in my emotions, it, it will help me with my addictions. That's another thing. By me accepting that I have other faults, it allows me to understand certain the, the, the core issue of certain things. It allows me to understand the core issue of my addictions. And by me allowing the and by me understanding the core issues of my addictions, I'll be able to take the addictions completely out. I'm able to pray specifically on what's going on in my life, and I'm able to talk to God specifically about these things, which He can then work through me specifically. And so by allowing God to work through you in these particular ways, allowing yourself to realize that, you know, you're not perfect. It's okay to not be perfect. Every, there's no such thing as normal. I don't care what anybody says. I don't care if you got a multi meals. I don't care if you're sleeping on the corner. There's no such thing as normal at all. And that's, what I, and that's, one, that's another reason why I'm able to kind of accept the fact that I may have bipolar depression is because nothing is normal. No norm. There's no kind of norm. Everybody has some kind of issue. That is why we must always try to understand everybody from their particular perspective of a level. And in order to understand everyone or to understand each and every single individual that you're around from their particular perspective, you have to be willing to be silent and listen to them speak. You have to be willing to listen to what they don't say or in a sense, just be willing to listen to them, period. And by listening to them, you begin to see who they are as a person. And that's just on that tip. But to kind of sum it all off, I got through the scripture. To sum it all off, we're going to end with uh, the Philippians chapter 2, verse 13 through 15. For it is God who works in you to will and to act in order to fulfill his good purpose. Do everything without grumbling or arguing so that you may become blameless and pure, children of God without fault in a warped and crooked generation. Then you will shine among them like stars in the sky. So have the courage have the courage to attain all this have the courage to attain all that's divinely in the right yours have the courage to admit when you have when you're wrong have the courage to admit when you just gotta let it go and admit when you just when you, you're just not right at times it's just sometimes you're, it's not that you're not wrong you're just not right you feel me so just admit when it's just time to grow it's time to let it go and it's time to just man up a woman up grow up really so I just pray that each and every single one of you have your own specific divine intervention with God to, and to discern in which area that you need assistance in. Because everybody needs help. There's, no, there's nothing wrong with help. Get a little bit of help. It might, you never know how, long, how far to take you. And I pray to God, our Father God, blesses you with the God will, God feel, divinely blessed day. Y'all have a blessed one.